Hello friends, I am Ardhindu De and you are watching Edis English Literature. In this video lecture, I am going to discuss the socio-political background of Shakespeare's times. Typically, we are going to discuss if Shakespeare is bound with Elizabethan spheres or exceeds them. It is a privileged truth that every man in a sense is the product of his age and no doubt Shakespeare must have represented his age. This is not to say that he did not exceed his age for that would be to strip him of his native genius. The inedible mark is forever in the history of world literature. It is just to point out that such a remarkable man has represented in his persona and works in a very remarkable age, Golden Elizabethan England. Queen Elizabeth, after whom the age in England is known as Elizabethan age, was another remarkable personality and so too was Sir Walter Raleigh, the soldier, scholar, statesman, a symbol of Elizabethan renaissance and resembling in his own way Leonardo da Vinci, the symbol and spirit of Italian renaissance. We may here refer further, uh, perhaps profitably, to Shakespeare's ideal of a renaissance man in the Prince of Denmark Hamlet and all these personalities, physical or fictive, who may offer us important clues to the social and political ferment of the age in which Shakespeare lived and wrote. While a reference to uncommon men and women of the age will lead us important insight into the socio-political background of the times, particularly the political side of the story, which was mostly enacted at the royal court encircled by the rising aristocracy, it would be unjust to forget the role of the common people of England. Those men at the pits in an Elizabethan theatre hall molding the attitude and taste of the time. At least they were taken care of by Shakespeare himself in his plays and in his working life. In fact, all of the Elizabethan audience were prepared to listen to those dramas. And when we are reading dramas after so many days, we must read the very, uh, the very pulse of the Elizabethan people. While Elizabeth I firmly established on the English throne, the Church of England grew into a national Protestant institution with alliance to the monarch. The religious break with Roma was complete, although it was not a, a, not a clean severance from the English past. However, the single development by itself meant an alteration in the balance of socio-political forces in England, which could not but affect decisively the different arts and ways of thoughts and habits. It was a thrilling age, pulsating with life and adventure in every walk of English life. The Queen had brought the church under her sway vanquished the rival power of feudalism while the challenge of parliament lay in future to disturb James I. People in general wanted a strong government that could secure peace from external aggression of the Spain and prosperity at home after the bloody civil wars. In southern Europe, there was a general reawakening that made Europeans conscience of their glorious past that was Greece and Rome. The Greek and Roman classics began to be studied anew. A new interest was felt as a result of new wearing consequent to Renaissance for mathematics and astrology, which naturally led to much navigational adventures and we can find out 
so much of the uh, naval exploits. It took some time for the spirit of Renaissance which originated in Italy to travel north and then turn west into the shores of Britain. But when it came into Elizabethan England, the ground was ready to receive it with open arms and the sowing was good and the harvesting still better. And who the harvester? The so-called Elizabethan um, great writers and notably Shakespeare is there. While the Renaissance awakened the interest in Greek and Roman classics, which first influenced the university men and then the artists of the various performing arts, particularly the drama, the native English tradition was never given a goodbye. Rather, there was a curious blending between the, the two modes of culture and literature to produce a new literature of which Shakespeare was the greatest representative. It was Shakespeare who mirrored his age most perfectly and his plays truly reflect the political, the social and cultural upheavals of the times. So when we are reading Shakespeare, we must take a note that we can have a beautiful panorama of Elizabethan England. We have observed already that Elizabethan England created a new culture that arose out of the interactions between a Renaissance influence and the native tradition. We have also noted the politico-economic changes as a result of the submission of with lords and the English church to the authority of the English crown. The later factor, that is uh, the matter of charge, changed the color of the royal court and it had its main ramifications on the ruling aristocracy whose effect was rather distant on the English masses. It is this ruling class that imbibed most readily the influences of the Renaissance that came to England from Italy via the continent. However, as the influence of the court was bound to be decisive on performing arts and particularly the drama staged uh, in the capital London or nearby, we find a definite change in the texture of the English plays of the period following the influence of Italian, Roman and Greek drama and literature. This, however, did not obliterate the mass tradition of the uh, English literature and the masses in England lived rather uninfluenced by the political currents and cross currents of the English court. Although the economic consequences um, of all the changes from, the, uh, from a feudal to a capitalist order was to affect them adversely at the end of the Elizabethan age, the masses during Shakespeare's lifetime remained rooted in their rural culture and devoted to the history um, of their, uh, their pastoral love. It was the hearty love of dance, music and buffoonery that we commonly know. They also liked scenes of physical violence to which particularly the Londoners in common were accustomed enjoying the sight of the beer waiting or open execution of criminals. Masses did also retain their medieval outlook in general and their beliefs and superstitions in ghosts, in supernatural things such as the efficacy of magic and wizardry, everything was there. Shakespeare born in rural England and came to the capital for the sake of a living. Shakespeare too have understood uh, these, the way of various forces at works and he alone could and did combine all the apparently contradictory elements into his form of romantic place. The range of interest of Elizabethan literature was certainly a function of Renaissance but the vitality of the language arose out of the oral tradition of the speech and thought rooted in the communal life, communal life that the medieval English masses has entertained. And it may be the urban, it may be the rural, but it all continued from that old tradition. 
as uh, part of inevitable the old communications and community and traditions and the new individualistic renaissance influence first clashed and then combined to produce a rich and invigorated uh, idioms of literature it will be seen that this rich and new idiom was handled by professional writers like Shakespeare in addressing a mixed public accustomed uh, more to listening than to reading and living a group of life. It was still the triumph of the oral communal native tradition over the privacy of the individual living. As a result, we find that Elizabethan literature in general lacks the conversational and psychological intimacy of a modern novel but uh, surpasses everything in expressing sensations and demonstrative aspects of feeling. That's the key that they bore with the tradition. Its tendency to an excess of eloquence is a testimony uh, to the sympathizing effort of the age for such eloquence has its source both in popular tradition and the educational methods of the Renaissance humans. To sum up, we may better quote from L.G. Salinger from his Time and Art in Shakespeare's Romances. These factors together largely explain why the drama was the chief form of Elizabethan art like music the second national medium. Drama was a communal art admitting personal virtuosity. The drama with all its scenes of pageantry or poem or festival celebrates communal events communally and in process unravels many prominent features of the Elizabethan age and the central theme of Elizabethan literature is the class between the individuals and the claim of the social order. So with the understanding that Shakespeare the man is the very product of Elizabethan age and the Elizabethan mass and the, uh, and the tradition and the language that they are embattling is all projected or all exemplified in Shakespearean writings. So try to grasp the very Shakespearean language and Shakespearean way of thinking or the very time and features of Renaissance uh, by your future course of studies. And if you have any question, just pop up here, ask me question. I will try my best to give some possible answers to your queries. Bye-bye. Thank you.